Hey, what's up everybody? This is Sean Wolfsegel from Sean Wolfsegel Cybersecurity, coming at you tonight with another episode of Cybersecurity Degree for Free. And in tonight's episode, I'm going to be talking to you about the OSI model. And specifically, we're going to talk about an introduction into networking. That's the reason why we're going to start off with the OSI model. So there are two models that are commonly used in the world of networking that you're going to see as a cybersecurity professional. And those would be the OSI model and the TCP IP model. We're going to start into that here in a moment, but I just wanted to let you know that all the material from tonight's video is from networkencyclopedia.com. This is not a paid endorsement for networkencyclopedia.com. I just wanted to mention them because that's where I got my material from, and they're a great resource. I highly recommend. I will go ahead and put them in the description, and you can go ahead and look through that and learn some more about networking concepts from their website. Here is the OSI model. Starting with physical layer, layer one. The physical layer is the lowest layer of the OSI model. It is responsible for the physical transmission of data over a network. This layer defines the electrical, mechanical, and procedural specifications for the physical connections between two devices. On this layer, you're going to commonly see devices such as network cables, what you think about when you think about ethernet cables, right? You're gonna see connectors, and you're gonna see network adapters. This is what you think about when you physically see objects in the real world, things that you actually can go out and touch. That's the physical layer. Layer two is the data link layer. The data link layer is responsible for ensuring the reliable delivery of data between two devices on the same network. This layer provides error detection and correction mechanisms to ensure that data is not corrupted during transmission. For layer two, the types of devices that you're gonna see on this layer include things like switches, bridges, and wireless access points. So this is really a bridge you can think about as the bridge between a digital world that I'm actually able to deliver this communication to you on and the actual physical cables that run electrical signals out and make it happen, make it all possible. So we're starting to actually take that electrical data and start to turn it into things like binary and very basic data so that way it can actually be used to transmit information. Layer three is the network layer. The network layer is responsible for routing data between different networks. This layer uses logical addressing to identify devices on different networks. Some things you're gonna see on this layer are routers and firewalls. Those are the big ones for the network layer and they help route traffic and they help prevent traffic from coming in or going out for that matter. You can create firewall rules to block the traffic. Routers help tell the network which direction to send different packets to. We'll dive into that later about routers and firewalls and the difference between a router and a switch and a bridge and so on in the next video. The next part is transport layer four. The transport layer is responsible for providing end-to-end -end communication between two applications. This layer ensures that data is delivered in the correct order and that any errors are corrected. Some things you're going to see on this layer are not going to be devices, but now you're going to start to actually see protocols pop up. So the most common things we see on the transport layer is TCP or transmission control protocol and UDP, which is user datagram protocol. This is actually where there's data starting to be transmitted back and forth. Transmission control, pro control protocol from a high level at this point in your knowledge journey is just when you want to send information and you want to make sure that information gets sent 100% without any loss. UDP gram protocol is whenever you're not worried about data loss, you're not worried about something getting lost in transit. Think about your things like Netflix or Disney Plus or any other streaming service that's using UDP. And same thing with game streaming, you're gonna have UDP on that. Transmission control protocol would be something like you go to google.com, there's a TCP handshake, and so you're going to go ahead and get that data 100% guaranteed every time there can't be any losses there. 
Same thing with YouTube. YouTube videos might be using UDP, but the actual website would probably be using TCP. The next thing is the session layer. The session layer is responsible for managing the communication between two applications. This layer establishes, maintains, and terminates sessions between applications. Devices on this layer are not typically visible to users. So you can think about this as the layer that's going to keep the communication between two applications. So some common things that you're gonna see on layer five are things like remote login services, file sharing, voice over IP, things like that. Those are some common things. You'll see protocols such as RPC, remote procedural call protocol, point-to-point uh, -point tunneling protocol. So this is somewhere that VPNs start to come into play. The next layer is the presentation layer. Layer six is the presentation layer. The presentation layer is responsible for formatting data so that it can be understood by the application layer. This layer translates data between different formats and ensures that data is presented in a way that is easy for the application to use. So with this layer, you're gonna to start to see encryption and decryption take place. You're going to get compression and decompression. You're gonna go ahead and start to get things like TLS and SSL, which is transport layer security and secure socket layer. They're cryptographic protocols and essentially they provide secure communications between different applications. You're going to also get things like MIME, which is multi-purpose internet mail extensions. That's a standard for representing different types of data and email messaging. The main point of this is for secure web browsing, secure file transfer, email, anything that you wanna do securely happens usually at this layer the presentation layer. And the last layer is the application layer, layer seven. The application layer is the highest layer of the OSI model. It is responsible for providing services to applications such as file transfer, email, and web browsing. This is the layer that we see on the front end, and this is where people are actually starting to do the work. This is when you go out to your web browser, let's say you have Safari or Google Chrome open up, and you go ahead and start typing. This is that application. This is something that somebody built on the front end and you're gonna go ahead and start playing with it. And this is typically what we think about when we're actually working with a user interface. So there is a great mnemonic that you should know about if you ever need this information in the future. And it's a very common one. There's lots of them out there, but this is my favorite. It's please do not throw sausage pizza away. And that's layer one through seven. Please do not throw sausage pizza away. Now we're going to go ahead and look at the TCP IP model, which is slightly different. This has only the network access layer, the internet layer, the transport layer, and the application layer. So if we were to put these side by side, the application layer is layers seven, six, and five of the OSI model. So the application, presentation, and session. And then the transport layer matches up with four. And then the network layer matches up again with three. And then the network interface layer matches up with two and one, data link and physical. You will sometimes hear it called network interface layer and sometimes you'll hear it called network access layer. So that wraps up everything for the OSI model and the TCP IP model, and what you can expect to start to understand with the networking basics in mind. The next video in the series is going to focus on some more networking basic concepts and how that's going to help you out as a cybersecurity professional in this field. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a wonderful night.